I want to ask if right now we can, I'm sure we're probably already recording, but I want to ask those that we've instructed to come, if you would come on stage, because we've got some victory to talk about today. We've got some stories of miracles that God is doing. Come on. This is where it starts. Come on. Let's, let's celebrate what God is doing in their lives. And they're coming right now. They're coming right. Okay. See, we, we have, a, we have a, an amazing group of people. These are just a few. There's more. And these are just a few. But I want, this is what happens. The Bible talks about the word of your testimony. The word, of, that, what does that mean? That's how we overcome. This is how we overcome by the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb has already been poured out for us. And then we overcome by the word of our testimony. You're gonna hear some testimonies today. Are y'all excited? And it is my prayer that you will relate to something. It's going to encourage your faith to keep believing in Jesus' name. Come on, one more time. Let's give it up for all of these testimonies today. All right, Corinne. Corinne is going to go first. Corinne, if you want to just step out right here so we can get you on camera next to me. And Corinne is going to share her amazing story. Yes. So my name is Corinne Shogi. Um, I have two stories to share. The first is um, I'm in the process of becoming a foster parent. Um, <laughs> So started that process in January and I'm still waiting. So just waiting and trusting the Lord and I've been praying that I would be able to have a house that's uh, a house of refuge and um, be a safe place for some kids in need. Um, so continuing to wait, but last week I got a call to do respite care. And so last weekend I was able to care for two little girls um, and just give respite to a foster family. And so I feel like that has been like a little blip of like it's coming and, wow. and, and the Lord is answering. So that's one, um, one on. way that God has answered. Um, the second is I work with a Christian ministry at UCF called The Navigators. Um, so I get to meet with college students and um, me and my staff team, we're pretty much campus ministry, uh, gosh, ministry, ministry workers. You're doing it. It's missionaries is what yeah. I was hoping oh, that's to say. Right. Um, campus missionaries. And we raise our support. We raise our salaries. So I've been praying for an additional $500 a month for each of us. Um, and just this month in August, the Lord provided an anonymous donation for me of $3,000. That's huge. <laughs> yes. um, and then a second one with uh, $300. And so just praising God for his provision so far and trusting him for more. Amen. Come on. God's going to keep doing more and more and more. That is beautiful. When you serve God's purposes and plans, take care of God's children. It is just incredible. I, Corinne, I just believe there is so much more that God's going to do in your life. Amen. So much more. All right. Demi is coming. This is Demi Castro. He's going to share an amazing testimony. Take it away. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Demi. Um, I don't know how many people actually know, but I am a full-time working actor. And um, this actually happened back in April. Yes. There was a period of worship that was going on, and Pastor Martha was encouraging the body to trust that God was moving in the background. Like, you thought that nothing was happening, but God was setting everything in place. And I remember that that Sunday, I was in the back Lord, I receive it. I receive it for me. And Monday morning, I got up and applied for a job at Target. <laughs> yeah. Because there was an impending strike coming. And, and it was like, I don't know where my money is going to come in, where my provision is going to come from. I know that I trust in the Lord. But I was like, Lord, I got to do a little something, you know? And sure enough, I applied. Tuesday, I received a phone call from my agent telling me, hey, there's a director of this film that wants to talk to you. Are you available? And I said, yes. To make a very long story short, I booked the film that same week. I got flown out to Mississippi for a cast dinner. I don't want to say any names. I can't really say too many, but it was a huge, huge actor celebrity. Um, while I'm out there, I booked another job the same day. Amen. While I'm in Mississippi for three weeks, I get this email from my agent telling me, you've been on the radar of the casting directors of The Chosen. <laughs> I 
And more than any other project, that's the one that really blew me away because that's the one that I had been praying for the most. Like, man, I want to be on The Chosen. This, this program has impacted my life and so many people around the world. And to know that I was on their radar, I, was, I didn't even have to audition. I was just offered a role. And I got to work on the project for two days. And if anything, the message and for me and for somebody that may need to hear this is that your name is being mentioned. That's right. Come on. Right. You may think that nothing is happening because you don't hear it. Yeah. But your name is being mentioned right. and God right. is moving and positioning things and placing for you that you may not be aware of. And you just have to continue to trust that God is taking care of it and He will take care of it. Amazing. And we're doing season three of The Chosen here. We're going to start September 11th. Uh, we're going to be doing season three for our small groups, our connect groups here on Monday nights. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're here for that. But then He will be in season four. Come on. That's incredible. And I promise y'all, we're going to be right here watching on this big screen, cheering you on. I am so excited. This is so amazing. And God, it's just awesome. And we've been holding this for so long. I was like, you have to share it. I can't hold it anymore. It's too much. But so isn't that amazing what God can do? Come on, let's just thank God. Beautiful. All right, Kimberly. Come on, guys. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kim. Um, I've been battling cancer. Well, I had been battling cancer in past tense. <laughs> Uh, September 2020, I was diagnosed with stage three cancer, and it was a liposarcoma. Um, I had surgery, and after surgery, they diagnosed me with uh, COPD as well, and said I'll be on a, um, oxygen for the rest of my life. Mm. Um, three months later, I stopped the uh, treatment of oxygen, the exercise and everything like that. My lungs are almost healed. I'm still working on those. The Lord is still working on those as well. Um, <laughs> I, was, um, I was in remission. I did chemotherapy. I also did radiation um, in remission for three years. And the cancer came back. So I'd seen a different doctor. And he was positive that he would be able to take all the cancer out. Um, they did remove my kidney, and to this day now, I am completely cancer-free. I also... I also want to touch base that my fiance here, he had also battled cancer. Yep. Uh, he had spinal cord cancer and they did surgery on him as well. And he is a walking miracle. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So this has been a battle that both of us together have been, you know, praising God and keeping faith in Lord that right. He will constantly work miracles in your life and He has cured both of us and we are here by the blessings of the Lord. Come on. Yeah. So my name is Adelise Rivera and um, yeah, it's so wonderful to be here in the presence of all of you guys. Um, and that's only because God is so wonderful. Um, I was diagnosed with a tumor in the nervous system of my spinal cord, which is what controls every movement of your body from your eyes to your fingernails, to your fingers and your toes. Um, the uh, doctor prayed a lot. I've been battling this for 10 years. Um, the doctor, it, it got really worse. The doctors remove, you know, they had to go in there, remove a piece of my spinal cord and remove the tumor. And the doctor had told me that I possibly would not be ever walking or moving at all, that I would be a complete, you know, laying down in bed forever. And thanks to God, he turned that around. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
I'm ultimately grateful to be here. I'm ultimately grateful to be walking around being here and worshiping God because he gave me another chance. I'm a walking miracle and I'm grateful. Come on, let's thank God that he heals. He heals. He makes a way. He opens doors. All right, Torrance, come on. Uh, Torrance. <laughs> um, I'm Torrance. Um, where do I start? Okay. Late May, around the summer, um, because I'm a teacher, uh, I went through a rough storm. Come on. It's all right. <laughs> nope. Um, during my birthday weekend, um, I had two big deaths in the family, and I lost my job all in the same week. Um, and I was asking God, I was like, how do I trust you? Yep. Yep. And so he asked me a simple question. He said, do you still trust me? And I said, yes, sir. Of course I trust you. You're going to provide as you always do. And um, during that time, I was just, you know, find a, trying to find a crutch. Anybody, whether it was friends, uh, you know, anything I could, you know, anything I could find. And God was like, no, 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 no. Don't go to that crutch, but come to me. That's right. That's right. So I went and I was just like, all right, God, you know what? I'm going to lay it all down to you. <laughs> You're going to take control. Yep. And he did just that. Um, following a few months after that, um, I had a few workouts with a few of my students because I'm a basketball coach as well. Um, and it was funny because they were speaking to me and my storm. Um, one of them, in the, in the process of them running, um, he said, he was like, Coach T, if you seek, you shall find. Come on. <laughs> if you should, <laughs> so I look at him like, okay, cool. Then another one come by. He said, Coach T. Um, I said, yes, sir. He says, um, you know, in the middle of your storm, God is with you at all times. Wow. Thank you, too. And he was like, Coach T, you want me to run them suicides? Yeah, go ahead, finish them. <laughs> so in the process of time, um, I get a call two weeks before school starts, and they call me back to my job. But not only did they call me back to my job, but they gave me a raise. <laughs> But anyways, uh, I just want to speak to, you know, some of the younger people that are in the house on tonight. Um, it doesn't matter what you're going through or that storm that you're in. God's going to provide. That's if right. you seek him, if you, I'm, I promise you, keep the faith, seek him, he's going to do the rest. That's right. It might, it might not look like, you know, it might not look like you have a way out, but I'm telling you, I promise you, just stick it through. That's right. Come on. Amazing. Come on, can we stand on our feet and thank God for the answer prayer, for the miracles? Thank you, guys. Thank you, God. Come on, let's really, let's really celebrate. Celebrate like it was you. Celebrate like God answered your prayer. Amazing, amazing. God is doing some amazing things, and I am just excited. Stay standing with me for just a moment. We only have a few minutes, but I just want to share something. I want to wrap this up. I want to wrap all of this up today. Um, our Miracles Week. For how many of you in have enjoyed this series on miracles? 
There's so much more in September, October, so much more that we're going to be talking about series and things we're going to be sharing. But we really felt like it was important to get just the faith stirred up for what God's going to do in the coming weeks before the end of the year and get aligned and filled with expectation for miracles. And I believe I'm going to just share something very quickly. I want to pray for us and kind of seal this moment. And then I'm going to share something, but I want you to extend your faith to receive miracles today. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. It is so important that you talk about the testimony that you live out. It is important. I asked several of these people to speak and many of them were like, I'm nervous. I don't know. And got up here and had to preach on them. Come on. And you know what? You know what that is? That's the anointing. When you begin to talk God up, you don't have to worry about how you sound. You don't have to worry about coming across a certain way. When you just begin to declare the testimony of the Lord on your life, there's an anointing that will push you and propel you. But more than that, it'll put it in you. Like Torrance is up here encouraging you. Two weeks ago, he needed encouragement. He needed somebody to tell him it was going to be all right. He needed somebody to say, God's going to make a way. It might not seem like it, but he will. And now he's up here just a few weeks later, and he's imparting to you about his God and how he's able to come through. Might not come like you want him, might not come in the timing you're thinking, but God will. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. And so we align ourselves with the miracles of God, not based on what we deserve. Because if it was based on what we deserved, we should, we'd be dead in a grave right now, all, every one of us. But it's based on what Jesus died for us to have. So bypass that part of you that thinks you haven't done enough to be worthy of a miracle or that you need to do something and pray more and all those things. Yes, we need to pray. Yes, we, we, we need to spend time with the Lord. But if you need a miracle today, you just need to ask God for it and keep asking. Can I pray for you today? If you need a miracle in your life, I want you to raise your hand all across this room. If you need a miracle, maybe you need increase. Maybe you're asking God to open a door like Corinne and, and it's something that's outside of, of what you thought you'd ever do. But now God has put this in your heart and, and it looks like you've got to go through all kinds of hurdles and hoops and you need a miracle. God's going to do that for you. Whatever you do for the kingdom, God will make happen for you. Maybe that's you. Father, I thank you for open doors and increase. I thank you that you're making a way where there seems to be no way. Father, I thank you, God, for those in this room that need a miracle in their finances. God, as we give, as we're generous, as we follow your word that tells us to be generous tithers and givers, that you will begin to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing we don't have room enough to contain. We thank you for that, God. We thank you. I just speak miracles of overflow into your life, miracles of increase into your life in Jesus name. Open doors. There's people talking about you. Like Demi said, your name is on the heart of somebody right now to give a promotion, to give an, a, an answer to, to open a door. There's someone that's going to even come back from your past. You haven't even thought of in years. And it's going to say, Hey, I I've thought of you and, and you came on my heart and God's going to make a way and don't discount the little miracles, the little movements that God is moving in your direction. Father, nothing is insignificant. We believe that all is working together for our good. We praise you through it all. We praise you through the tiniest little step that we take towards you. God, will be people of gratitude and thanksgiving that we'll see your miracles moving in everything that we do. We'll, be, we'll begin to live our days out looking, searching, expecting for miracles and open doors. I thank you for people in this room that are believing for a son or a daughter to come back to God. I thank you that today they're going to get a phone call and it might not be the completion of the miracle, but it's going to be movement. It's going to be a, it's going to be a, a call or, 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 or something that will happen that will move the needle in the direction of the miracle. And God, we're counting that. We're counting that today. When there's joy, where there was no joy, that counts. That's our miracle. When there's peace, when we haven't experienced peace, that's part of it. That's the miracle that you are working in our lives. I pray today that we would have ears to hear, eyes to see. We'd be leaned in to what the hand of God is doing and we would not discount anything. Father, we would see it with spiritual eyes. Make us more aware of your miracle hand moving in our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Make us become more aware. 
Let us become more aware. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. We do have one more. We do have one more testimony. And can, do y'all have just a couple minutes? Y'all good? Everybody good? You, in, you encouraged so far? I know this is going to be... The, come on, if you're encouraged, don't patty cake. <laughs> I just want to read a scripture to you, and then I'm going to have the last, the, the last people that are going to come up and share. I, I, want to, I want to just kind of do a quick recap, real, real quick, because Miracles Week 1 was a great way to jump off into this series, and we, we talked about what is it that hinders our miracle. There are things that hinder our miracle, like you're not asking big enough. You underestimate what God can do. You aren't approaching God with boldness. Anybody remember any of this? If, if you don't, and maybe you didn't get a chance to see it on our YouTube page, those of you that are watching on YouTube, hello, we're glad you're here. You can go back and watch all of these messages. They're on our Epic Life YouTube page, and you can see all the messages in their entirety. And I encourage you to go back and watch them. If you could subscribe, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, like, leave a comment. All of that is important because it pushes the algorithm to other people. And the more likes, the more comments, more people, YouTube will show it to more people. Did y'all know that's how it works? They will show it. So the more we like something, the more we'll see something. So that's why it's so important that you share. And many times we are not seeing the miracles because it's just, we're not asking God for big enough. And we talked about how words matter. How many of you remember that? Words matter. And, and we have to realize the power of our words. And then week two, we talked about miracles require movement. I really like that one because I'm a mover. I don't like to stay where I am. I like to move and, and be determined. I like to, to align myself with expectation of what God is going to do. And miracles will draw God's attention. We talked about the woman with the issue of blood, how she moved out of outside of the gates and pressed her way to where Jesus was. And she reached out with persistence and with expectation and with determination. And she risked her life to get to Jesus, who was her miracle. And then week three, we talked about how honor unlocks miracles. How many of you were here for that? We talked about how honor will unlock miracles in your life, how Jesus went among his hometown. The Bible says he was unable to do many miracles. He did a little bit, but there was such a familiarity. There was such an unbelief in who he was. There was such a lack of honor that Jesus did not do. It does not say he could not do. It says he was unable to do. In other words, that word unable means he did not take the opportunity to do it. He had the power. He had the ability. He just decided not to. Why? Because there was not honor. There was such a lack of belief. And so today we're going to wrap this up. I'm going to tell y'all we're going to do this quick. Y'all ready? Look at somebody and say, she just told us something. And I hope it's true. Okay. So miracles Here's the last thing I want to share with you today, and we're going to, we're going to kind of put a big exclamation point on this day in this series. Miracles require crazy faith. Require, or, or, or just the word persistence. I like to use those interchangeably, but crazy faith. It requires crazy faith. Come on, look at somebody next to you. Say, you have any crazy faith? You're going to have some crazy faith if you're going to see your miracle. I want you to go with me quickly to Luke chapter 18. And the title of this, of this chapter is, This Woman is Driving Me Crazy. This woman is driving me crazy. That's the title. You open your Bible to a specific translation. And it's just this story of this woman who is driving this man crazy. Luke 18. My husband says, amen. Was that me? Okay. <laughs> Verse 1. It says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Always pray and not give up. This is why Jesus is sharing this parable with them. Verse two, he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. And we don't know what her adversary was. We don't know if her, her maybe daughter had been assaulted. We don't know if her son was falsely in prison. We don't know, but we know she had an adversary and she was begging for justice. Verse four, for some time, the judge refused. 
But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, but because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? When Jesus comes back, will he find faith? Jesus is sharing this parable of a woman who would not give up to the point she was so eager and earnest and aggravated and crazy. The judge, you said, I really don't care what, you can't get me to do anything. Couldn't be manipulated, couldn't be controlled, couldn't be influenced. He said, even because of that, I'm gonna give her what she wants because if I don't, she's so crazy, she's gonna come back and, and attack me. That gives us a picture of how eager, of how desperate this woman was to get justice in her life. It is the parable of the persistent widow. And I just think the nice word for persistent, well, the, the, the word for the crazy is the word, and the nice word is persistent. I want to be a little crazy when it comes to pulling my miracle into my life. I'm not going to just sit back and just hope things get better. No, I'm going to stay in a place of persistent worship and praise and asking and thanking God that it's done. How desperate are you today for your miracle? How desperate are you for your breakthrough? How badly do you need the blessing to come into your life? Or are we just kind of stuck in a land of comfort? I'm telling you, this persistence widow's methodology was unorthodox. And technically, she could have waited for her day in court, but she refused to wait. And I'm surprised the judge did not file a restraining order against her. But he didn't. And he didn't care less. He couldn't care less about uh, about her or how she felt. But God did not care less about protocol. God showed up when she began to demand and place a demand on the miracle. Jesus is to be honored. Jesus is one of those that we honor. We honor him by being in church. We honor him by trusting him and putting our faith in him. Why? Because Jesus honors faith. Jesus honored the prostitute who crashed a party at the Pharisee's home to anoint his feet. Jesus honored the tax collector who climbed a tree in a three-piece suit just to get a glimpse of him. He honored him. Jesus honored the four friends who cut in line, cut a hole in somebody else's house in the roof, ceiling to help their friend. And now Jesus is honoring this crazy woman who is willing to go before a judge and act crazy just because she won't stop knocking. We need to keep knocking. The common denominator with all of these stories is crazy faith. We've got to get it in our heads. Some of these things, we're going to have to fight the devil. We're going to have to fight our emotions. We're going to have to push past all kinds of issues to get our miracle in our lives. I don't know why I feel like I'm having to persist with this message today because I want to get this in you. I want to push this in you. I want you to have faith on trusting God and don't just pray about your miracle. Act on it. You don't just, don't just pray. I've, I've had people throughout my life there, they, they'll say, well, you know, my husband or my wife wants to move way across town or way across the country. And I just don't want to do that. I don't think that's the right decision. And I'm like, well, have you talked to them about it? No, I'm just going to keep praying about it. You haven't had a conversation about how you feel. No, no, no. I'm just going to keep praying about it. And I, I have told them, stop praying and start talking. You need to communicate. Don't lean on the Holy Spirit to say what you can say. Now, I'm not saying that we don't, we don't pray. We can do both, but have a conversation. Don't just sit and think, well, I'm a victim because God didn't answer my prayer. No, he gave you a mouth for a reason. Use it. Act on what you're believing God to do. Come on. See, there are defining moments in life that we need to prove to God that we mean business. We need to prove to God that this is not business as usual. God, I'm telling you right now, I need an answer. 
God, I'm t- I need an answer. I've had moments in my life where I needed an answer from God and it just was not moving in my direction. And I just got tired of it. I'd prayed every prayer I knew how to pray. I had quoted every scripture I had given. I had done it all. And one day I'm outside and I said, God, I'm in Jesus' name. It breaks today. This situation changes today. I'm not waiting another day. I love you. I put my trust in you, but I've got to place a demand on the breakthrough that I need in my life. I'm not spending another day frustrated. I'm not spending another day wondering what's going to happen. Today, I step into my authority, and God, I ask you to break through my life and bring me the answer. And can I tell you, later that day, I got a phone call that changed everything. That same day, God does that. Now, does he always do it? Sometimes we don't place enough demand on him. I stayed in a situation for several years that I prayed and prayed and prayed for a breakthrough, but it was that day. We got to let God do what he does, but then we've got to stay persistently knocking. Let's be like this crazy faith widow that said, oh, I'm not giving up. I will take, I'll burn the house down. I'm going to get what God has for me. Don't burn the house down. She's determined. She's so anxious. She's so desperate. She's asking God, God, I need an answer. She's going to the only person she knows that can give her the breakthrough and she's harassing him. Some of you, we just don't want it bad enough. We just don't want it bad enough. You know, there are, there are people that I have you know, been raised up with and grown up with, and I know great singers, great musicians, some of the best singers that you'll ever see. There's, a, there's even a documentary, I think it's called 10 Steps from, from Star, Stardom, I think it's called, and some of the greatest singers that you will never hear. Some of the, they have sang on stages and on albums with every great, the Rolling Stones, they've sang with every artist, going back to the 70s, great, I mean, blow you away with their vocal ability, but in their mindset, they just did not want to do that. They, they, there, was a, there was a part of them that they didn't hunger for, for what they could have been. They got comfortable with taking a check. They got comfortable with having all their bills paid and they never pressed, be- they wanted it, but they just didn't want it bad enough. And people that did not even have half of the skill and the ability and the talent that were just hungrier than they were came and took that spot and went on and became even more famous and, and more known only, and it was just a hunger. There's no reason, can I tell you today, there is no reason for me to have had the success I've had in music except for my husband, who is as persistent as this crazy faith lady. He does not take no for an answer. He does not, look look at me. He does not take no for an answer. He'll say no, but he gonna take no from you. He doesn't take no for an answer because he believes in what God has put in his heart and he's not going to stop until it comes to pass. Whatever he's got to do, I mean, whatever he's got, if he determines he's gonna be the first one on Delta on the flight, it doesn't matter if our seat's in the back. He's gonna find a way to be the first one on that flight. And it used to be, he'd say, you need to get over it. Cause I'd be like, oh, don't push your way in front of people. Let's just wait our turn. He goes, I'm not waiting my turn. Half these people fly once a year. I fly two or three times a week. I did, this is my taxi. Get off, get off my taxi. Let them go sit in the back. They don't know any, any different. They don't know there's first class up here. I know it. And once you've experienced first class, you become crazy real quick to make sure I can't sit anywhere else. I'm sorry. I gotta be up there. See, that's persistence. One time, years ago, when we first started traveling, I'm hurrying, okay? The one, one time, years ago, when we were first started to travel, uh, it was Thanksgiving. Actually, I write about this in my new book. You can read all about this and more stories. This is one of the stories in my book. And we had just had a new record, and we were kind of trying to figure out places we could sing and minister, and nobody really knew who we were. They knew a few of my songs, and you know, I didn't know how much they knew out in the gospel world, but some doors had begun to open a little bit, and it was Thanksgiving weekend, and my husband had said to me two weeks before then, two or three weeks, he said, guess what? Donnie McClurkin is doing a conference in Orlando here and uh, here in Orlando, and we're going to go. S- I-, I set it up, and, and you're going to go sing. Well, what I heard was Donnie McClurkin requested you <laughs> specifically to come and sing at his conference. That's what I heard. Okay, I was so honored. I was blown away. This is God. God has answered my prayers. 
right? And so it was Thanksgiving, and then I thought, why are you having a conference over Thanksgiving? What in the world? Do you hate Thanksgiving? Like, what are you doing? But, but they, they had the conference, and I remember Thanksgiving Day came, and I was with my family, with my sisters, with all of our kids. We'd finished the turkey. It was time for us to leave, and I just felt like I don't want to leave. I mean, I know that's probably a great opportunity, but it's Thanksgiving Day. I don't see my family like this. I don't want to leave everybody. They're all going to have an experience. I'm going to miss out on it. And my husband would say, "No, no, no. This is a we got to you know we got to be in these rooms. We got to get around more people. We've got to connect. It's relational. They really want us to come. That's what I heard. They really want us to come." And so I said, well, all right. And so I talked to my sisters and they said, listen, this is your job now. You put an album out. This is your job. You've got to go. You got to travel. You, you got to go. No matter what it is, you have to say yes. And unless God just says, no, you need to go with a yes. And so I left and I knew they were going to eat leftover turkey and I was going to miss out with the Hawaiian rolls. You know what I'm saying? Like you make a sandwich and all that. I was so, you know, just, I was sad. But then I get in the car and I'm excited because I'm thinking, I'm going to get to meet Donnie McClurkin. Hopefully, I mean, this is going to be great. I'm going to hopefully get to sing a song or two. I didn't really know what to expect. So I get in the car and I'm like, I, you know, honestly, I just can't believe that Donnie invited me to come. I say this to my husband. I mean, he called, how did he get our number? And this is what he said. He goes, well, he didn't invite you technically. I said, what? What do you mean? He said, well, I heard they were coming. And so I called the manager of Donnie, Roger Holmes. And I, I called him and I said, look, we live here in town. If you would like Martha Munizzi to come and sing, she will. He's telling me this as I'm leaving my family. On Thanksgiving, I'm not talking about Thanksgiving Eve. I'm talking about Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> and I was so mad. I was like this crazy woman. I think my husband probably should have had a restraining order for me that day. I was so angry. I was like, what are you talking about? You mean they didn't invite us? He said, no, we kind of invited ourselves. I said, no, you invited ourselves. <laughs> we didn't do anything. This was you. He said, Martha, we have a new album out. This is an opportunity. We don't have to fly anywhere. And I said, well, are they paying us anything? He's like, well, that was the other part. <laughs> no, we just said we'll set up a table in the back for our product and we'll just make that. I said, are you kidding me? I'm probably not going to meet Donnie now. He probably won't even notice me. This is crazy. I mean, this is, this is my flesh now. And now I left my family and this is so embarrassing. And now I'm going to walk into a room where I think I'm going to be honored. And I think people are going to be so excited to see me and they don't even know who I am. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving. It's, call them. We're not coming. Oh no, we're coming. We're already halfway there. I remember being so frustrated. I was so frustrated, but all the way there, I fixed my attitude. I asked the Lord to help me. And I said, Lord, I've just got to be expectant, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. And I remember I walked in the back of that huge arena, that big room, and Donnie was on stage with his singers, with his band. And I walk in, they were sound checking, and I didn't know what was going to happen or what he was going to say, or, and he had his back to me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. The, the singers, this is 20 years ago. The singers and musicians, world-class, incredible. And, and Pastor Donnie is leading them and sound checking. He turns around and he sees me in the back of the room and he said, Martha Munizzi, I'm so glad you're here. And he starts singing, there is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. Girl, get up here and sing that song. I got up on that stage during soundcheck, and Donnie became my background singer. It turned that quickly. It turned that quickly. See, see, and from that moment on, we were actually able to meet in the back, and you can read more of the details in the book, but at the end of the, end of the day, we were able to sit with Roger Holmes, who's one of the greatest managers. Roger, if you're watching this, you will disagree with me because you always do when I give you accolades, but he is amazing. He gave us the greatest wisdom 
for our career in that moment and changed everything, shifted everything for us to not sign with a label, to become independent artists. We were the number, they were the first independent artists in gospel and many people followed us after that. I mean, it literally created a whole segment of gospel art. I'm just telling you, you just don't ever know what God's gonna do. He's setting you up. Look at me, he's setting you up. You just need to be persistent for what God can do. And that needs to, that you need to apply that in every area of your life. Be persistent. Don't you dare give up. Yes. There's somebody that has your breakthrough. There's somebody that's just waiting on somebody that has crazy faith. And here's the last thing. But have you have you ever heard this this uh, this phrase pent up demand? You heard of that phrase, pent up demand? The business world regards the pent up demand. And what that means is an especially strong demand by the public for a particular product. It is a specific product that all of us just say, we want that. We, you better make more because we want it. And there's a demand on that product. So if you have a pent up demand in your spirit and in your heart, if you've got something that you're believing God to do, you just need to keep on releasing the sound of thanksgiving. Release that sound of it's happening now. It's going to happen now. God, you're doing it now. You're pouring it out on me now. It might take another five years. It's still now. You know why? Because I believe it now. And whatever God is doing, he's working things together. And the longer it takes, the better it is going to be. Come on, somebody. Whatever I have to do. I have a pent up demand in my heart that I'm releasing because I am not going to stop knocking. I am not going to stop believing until I receive it. That's a word for somebody today. You need to keep knocking. You need to keep seeking. You need to keep asking. And don't you dare give up until you receive it. Put a demand on the word of God. Who am I talking to today? Who am I talking to online? Put a demand on God until it manifests. Keep talking it. Keep believing it. Stop talking about the past. Stop talking about failures. Stop talking about what went wrong. Put a demand on the word of God and put a demand on answered prayer. Somebody say now. Come on, release the sound of now. Come on, say now. We're pulling miracles into our now. We're believing God for now. Say, I don't even need the miracle to happen. I just need the faith for it. I don't really need that. Th it's going to come. I just need, I just don't want to fall into uh, fear. I got to stay in faith. That's a miracle right there. And this climate, you could so easily fall into fear, anxiety, waiting, desperation, walking away, leaving. When God's saying, no, you keep putting the demand, put the demand. Because you know why? Many of us, we're fighting spiritual realms we don't know anything about. We're, Daniel, Daniel fought, prayed for 21 days, and when the angel came on the 20, I think it was the 23rd day, he said, I tried to get you. From the first day you prayed, we heard your prayer. And I've been fighting a heavenly war to get to you. See, that's why we can't, persistent prayer matters. Keep praying, keep believing. When Demi said he was standing in the back and that word was released that God is putting things together you cannot see, the very next day he went and got uh, he tried to get a job at Target. See, he's doing everything he can in, in his strength to say, God, I want to provide. God, I want to honor my family. He's not just sitting there waiting. No, that's placing a demand. God, I'm not going to sit back and just be lazy about it. No, I've got to take care of business and I'm going to trust that you're going to work, work a miracle. And in the same day, he gets a phone call that changed his life. And then later that day gets another one. See, that's what God will do. It will happen suddenly. It'll happen when you're not even really thinking about it anymore. You're just so happy and filled with what God's doing and full of faith. Then all of a sudden, suddenly, suddenly the winds will change. Suddenly the doors will open. Suddenly your name will get called. You'll go from the back to the front. Suddenly your children will call and say, Mama, I want to go to church with you today. In one moment, you'll get a, jo a job opportunity, a pay raise. You'll find that person that's trying to walk out on you will come back and say, you know, I feel like I've been wrong. I feel like God's been, I'm telling you, it'll happen suddenly. Don't give up until you see it manifest. Come on, give God the praise today. I want Danielle and Nicole to come. Come on, give him praise. Somebody just reach up and grab that miracle. Come on, grab that miracle. Stir up your faith. If you're online, right where you are, Grab that miracle. Put a demand on the Word of God.
Woo! Pent up demand. Like it's got to come into my life. I'm not giving up until I see the miracle. Amen. I want Danielle and Nicole to share what God has done in their lives and then we'll we'll close. Yes, today's just been amazing. All the miracles that have been shared and we have had kind of an interesting summer. Um, we had a lot going on and um, I know a lot of you guys know that we went to a summer camp and it was absolutely amazing. It was life-changing. Our students came back completely transformed and while we were there, I, I Honestly, it, it was interesting because it kind of felt like there was a lot of spiritual warfare. I know even for me personally, it felt like there were a lot of things that were kind of trying to distract me from leading, from really pouring into our students. And God is so good because He moved regardless. And He moved in spite of even what I was facing. I kind of had a cold that week too. It was just like a lot of things. God, um, like I said, is so, so good because on our way back, uh, we had an interesting car ride to say the least, bus ride. And um, on our way to camp, we took three or four charter buses and everything was fine on the way there, no issues, everything was good. And you know, you never think anything's gonna you know, happen. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. And we are and we were. But on our way back, a kind of a freak thing happened. And one of the, the drivers of the buses in front of us, it was the staff bus, um, started to, kind of swerve over. I think he fell asleep, something crazy like that. And it was by the grace of God that the staff members on that bus noticed that something was happening and they took control of the wheel. They were able to stop that bus in time. I mean, we're on the highway. We're going 70 miles an hour. And again, it was all the staff members and, um, you know, I think he passed out. They had no pulse. I mean, crazy stuff, things that you would never ever expect to happen. And it was happening right in front of us. And so I'm sitting with Danielle and I go, Danielle, what's happening? Oh my gosh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We pray the blood of Jesus over that bus. In Jesus' name, we will live, we will not die. Nothing will happen to that bus. And it was by the grace of God, nothing happened. We were completely fine. Nobody was hurt at all. No, there were no injuries. The driver ended up, he was able to come back and, and they were able to, to kind of figure out what, what the issue was. And so we were kind of shaken up by that. So then we make it home. We had a two hour delay, but we make it home. We were spending some time with our parents that next day. We had zero sleep, no sleep at all. We're so tired. So then we get in our car to go back to our house. And the enemy is, he was really trying that day um, because it just so happened that we were sitting at a red light. There was maybe one car in front of us and thank God there was some space in between us. But we got into a three car pileup, <laughs> just sitting at a red light. The actual, like just hours after we had already witnessed an almost horrible car crash. Um, we got hit twice, impacted twice. And just, you know, my neck was hurting instantly. It was insane. But again, it was because of the grace of God that it wasn't any worse. We were protected. It, you know, nobody was, was seriously hurt. There was, you know, it was just some neck pain and all that kind of stuff. But it just was, it was crazy to me because we have just been praying for all these miracles. We've, I, we, know, we don't get in car crashes. We don't get in accidents. We don't really get hit very often. So for this to happen, twice, two, twice in a row, it was just, it blew my mind. And, but also throughout this time, God was also answering some prayers and Danielle's gonna explain that. Yeah, so in the middle of all of that, which we were very emotional, as you can imagine, we were very exhausted and we had a lot of questions, like many of you shared, like, God, what is going on? Um, you know, a lot of residual pain at the chiropractor every day. And we're just frustrated and mad at the enemy for fighting us so hard. Um, and so we kind of hit a low point just a little bit. Um, but I think it was that week, that same week, uh, we received a call to do a, uh, a booking on TV with our uh, friends at Maverick City Music. So in the same week, <laughs> in the same week, in the middle, anybody just had like a messy miracle? Just like you get your prayer answered and it's like messy. And you're like, you your know what? Hurts. I'll take it. Yes. Appreciate it. You still got back pain. And you're back like, pain. We're coming. We'll be there. Oh, I'm there with my ice pack on the plane. <laughs> but God um, just opened an incredible door for us. And we were on Fox News in front of like millions and millions of people. And uh, it's an incredible thing. 
And we're so grateful. And you know, God's just continuing to open doors. Nicole and I uh, are, are very, very serious about um, just our music careers. And we've worked on it for many, many years and um, had a lot of, you know, open doors and a lot of closed doors. And so, you know, the like this old saying, you know, that doors, the doors that God's opening and all of that, like, what's the saying? I'm blanking on it. When God, no, not that saying, the other one. There's so many. Somebody help me out. When he closes a window, I like that, Pastor Dan. But the when he closes a window, he opens a door. But we've faced a lot of um, industry kind of like highs and lows and even rejection. And so it's been a really, really long journey. And so God's opening doors. Um, man, are, man is not doing this. This is so divine um, because we're here on Sundays. We're here every week. We've been faithfully serving and it's the joy of our lives to be able to be yeah. here and serve on staff. And so to kind of get these, these God opportunities, um, we don't take it for granted at all. And we're grateful for our pastors that let us yes. kind of you know change our schedules around kind of do that and work on the plane. Um, but anyways, I don't know if anybody got to see it, but we did Fox and Friends um, Friday morning, really, really early. Come on, why don't you stand up to your feet today? We serve a God that we can put our trust in Him and every miracle that He's gonna provide is by His Spirit, by the Spirit of the living God. That's what we talked about this week. God's gonna do it. The Holy Spirit is gonna do it. He's not gonna do it because you're strong. He's gonna do it because He's able. Come on, He's gonna do it because He's able. Amen, amen. Come on, let's just give God one big shout. Just a shout of what He can do. If we'll persist, and you persist in worship, persist in praise. When you get in your car throughout the week, make sure that you're filling up that car, filling up that house, filling up that room with the praises of your God. Come on, don't listen to everything else and then wonder why you're defeated. Put worship on, put your you version at, whatever you gotta do, fill it up. Fill your temple up with praise and worship and the Word of God, and then place a demand on it in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you so much for this series. We thank you that we've learned, we've grown, we've leaned in, our faith is stronger. God, we're ready, we're positioned now for more to happen. We thank you for everything that you've done up until this moment. We don't have enough breath in our body till the day we die to give you the praise that you deserve. If we praise you every moment of the day, we still don't have enough years left to thank you for what you've already done. But today, Father, we thank you for what you've done and we thank you for what you're doing. And God, we thank you for what you are going to do. Miracles, signs, and wonders are flowing into our lives. We receive it and we believe it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Come on, let's thank God for miracles. Not by power, not by might. I wanna ask if you would pray with me just one more moment. Close your eyes, bow your heads. If there's anyone in this room today, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you know that is the greatest miracle? The fact that Jesus loves us enough to say, I want you, I choose you, I created you. I desire to be in relationship with you. What a miracle. What a miracle. That just humbles me down to almost nothing when I think about how much Jesus dies for me, enough to where God sent His Son for His Son to die on a cross for all of my mistakes, all of my sins, all the, the time that we spent running from God. God still loves us. The Bible says, while you were still in your sin, Jesus died. He died. That's how much He loves you. And today is the day of salvation. And the Holy Spirit, when we talked about not by power, not by might, by the Spirit of the living God, the living God is a spirit. And right now, God's Word says that He is speaking to hearts in this room. So you can't even know Jesus without the help of the Holy Spirit. So right now, if you're feeling that pull, that something's tapping you, maybe you're about to cry, maybe you're feeling this warmth, maybe you're feeling a drawing. You just feel like, I need to do something. I have been running my own race. I've been doing this outside of a relationship with God, and I can't do it anymore. Today is the day to lay it all down and surrender your life to Him. If you're in this room today, stop trying to fix yourself up. Try, stop trying to find a reason you're worthy of God's love. None of us are worthy. None of us deserve it. But Jesus loves us anyway, and our place in this relationship with him is just to humble ourselves and receive his love and Jesus is here he wants to give you a new start a new future 
life in Him, everlasting life, joy like you've never known, a, 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 a pattern for living in His Word. That's what's available to you. Unconditional love, eternal life in heaven with Jesus. But you gotta know him, you gotta say yes. I wanna ask if there's anyone in this room today, no one looking around, if you would say, I'm ready to say yes. I need the miracle of Jesus in my life. I wanna surrender my life to him. Would you raise your hand? One, two, three, lift it up. Play. Would you just pray for me? I'm believing that Jesus is gonna come into my life and change me in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want us to pray this prayer out loud together. Say, dear Jesus, today I come to you I know that I'm a sinner and God, I need a savior. I receive Jesus into my life. I surrender everything to you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I need you. I invite you in. Teach me, lead me and guide me. Today I receive forgiveness of all of my sins. I believe I will spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. Today I know I am a child of the Most High God. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, can we give God a shout of praise? Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. I believe, come on, hands up. Your presence comes when we praise you. I believe. This is your part. You sing. I've got great expectations. 